Boys is an improvised detective serial. Every Monday morning, the Bureau Boys solve crimes based on clues sent in by their pumpkin formants. That's you. Go to thebureauboys.com to submit your clues. Thank you to Informant Randy for this week's clue, Toothpaste. When we last left the Bureau Boys, they were in the basement, the spooky basement of the Bureau, figuring out their next case, the case of the Tasteful Cabinet. They've packed up their spooky supplies into the trunk of their clanky and... Broken down? Jalopy? Yes, and (laughs) rusted was the word. For the Bureau Boys on the way to Elm Street to investigate the spooky house, their car broke down, so they had to Uber the rest of the way. Or Uber. The Bureau Boys pull up in front of the house on Elm Street. They thank their Uber driver and give him three stars and do not leave a tip. For he was a little too chatty, if you know what I mean. Little do the Bureau Boys know that they have forgotten all of their equipment in the back of the trunk of the Uber as it pulls away. Okay, Detective Potter, uh, why don't you take out your science case and we can begin the inspection of the grounds before we enter the house. Yes, of course, sure. I've got it right. Uh, shit. Hey, uh, hey, come on. Come on. The, uh, damn, uh, yeah, the boober. Detective Riley, all my stuff was in the back of the trunk of the Uber. The boober. That damn boober driver wouldn't shut up and I... I was fiddling around with my my crystal ball and my little twigs and my my voodoo man. Dang it, I think I stuffed it in the back of the seat. I was going to say that would would be fine if you had all that stuff with you. You left you left all of your stuff in the back seat, Detective Riley? And you left all your stuff in the trunk. What a pair of detectives we are. Oh, and I think I left my gun in his glove compartment. Cuz as you know, I like to sit in the front of a boober in the front, because I don't like to feel like a guest. I want to feel like a friend. You're a congenial guy. I've always admired that about you. Me, I just, I hate people, as you know. And yes. I, yes. I, I, I'm, well, if you don't have your gun, it's not the end of the world. I do have a pocket full of bullets. So, Detective Potter and Detective Riley approach the scary-looking house with cobwebs from the windows with creaky doors with broken out screens with a lawn that's just a little bit too long for the homeowners association watch your stuff detective potter there might be traps here i don't trust this house as far as i can throw it come on detective riley there's not going to be any <laughs> detective potter falls through a trap door in the front porch and slides down a slide into the basement of the spooky house. The Buro boys have never been separated like this before. Not this severely before. They'll have to use their wits to get back to one another. Except, of course, for all the time that they didn't know each other and lived in different states. Uh, 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 Detective Potter picks himself up off the spooky, dusty, cobwebbed basement floor and gains his bearings. <coughs> Without the flashlight, he is forced to use his own eyes to detect. Uh, oh, God. Oh, I forgot my flashlight in the back of the car. Thank goodness I still have these eyes. Detective Potter engages night vision, which is letting his eyes adjust to the gloomy basement. 
Detective Riley? Detective Riley? Detective Riley, can you hear me? Detective Potter! Detective Riley, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Thanks for asking. I figured if you could talk, you weren't dead. So that's good enough for me. What if I had two broken legs and was lying bleeding out on the floor right now? Two compound fractures. You would have led with that. Let's be honest. I think I still would have led with Detective Riley, can you hear me? Because it doesn't really make sense for me to be explaining my injuries just into the void, Detective Riley. All right, well, I don't have my my rope or anything. I can't come down there. I'm going to have to enter the house through the front door. And we're going to have to find each other somewhere in the house. Do you see any... Doors down there, windows. Detective Potter looks around the spooky basement. Detective Riley, you know you don't have any rope, but how long's your beard these days? Detective Riley grasps his beard with both hands, undoing the tiny knots of twine, tying up his beard to make it look like a normal man's beard. But in fact, it is much longer. Detective Riley unfurls his beard down the trapdoor shaft, but unfortunately, it falls just short of Detective Potter's grasp. Ah, damn it, Detective Riley. Very impressive, but it just doesn't quite reach. You're right, I think you How have... is ten... Go on. How is ten feet not long enough for you to reach? Detective Riley, you're a taller guy than I am, if that's what you want to say. I get it. You're taller. You have a longer beard. You're just really down there. I'm... <sighs> You'll have to go in through the front door. I'll check around the basement and see what's happening. So, Detective Riley enters through the front door of the spooky house into the spooky foyer. But not before rolling up his beard and refastening it. Make it a normal height of six to eight inches. Detective Riley, are you inside yet? What is taking you so long? Are you pruning your beard? Detective Riley catches himself in the spooky mirror out inside of the doorway, admiring his own facial locks. Detective Riley, can you hear me? Detective Potter's voice carries through the vent in the floorboards. Detective Potter, detective. <laughs> Both of the voices, one might say, carry through the vent, and it allows the bureau boys to continue to communicate throughout this spooky house. Oh, did I mention the vents are also spooky? Detective Potter, I can hear you through these vents with little carve outs of pumpkin heads. Yes, these. I, I hear you crystal clear. It's like you're in the same room with me, Detective. Riley? It's like cans with a string connected to them. Yes, I agree. It's... Oh, shit, I forgot. I left my cans with the string in the trunk of the boober. Detective Riley, that would have been perfect in this situation. Well, this is what we've got. Luckily, I think these vents are all around the house, so we should still be able to communicate as we traverse. Thank goodness. Don't be too loud, and don't break anything, because you know what they say, if you break it... I bought it? Detective Riley, you... You know nothing scares me more than impulse purchases. And painful price. So we don't want to be caught with any accidents because we don't have any money either. Okay, Detective Riley, tell me what you see upstairs. Is it a nice house, bad house? Sometimes houses look really ugly on the outside, and you go inside and you're like, man, there's a lot more space in here than I thought. Is this like one of those houses, Detective Riley? Detective Riley surveys the foyer. In front of him is a large staircase leading to another level of the house. To the left is the living room, but to him it looks pretty dead. Detective Riley, can you tell me out loud what it looks like up there? Sir, I was just scanning the area. I was getting a good full picture of it. It's been 15 minutes, Detective Riley, since you've said anything. How big is this foyer? I've been screaming from down here. There's a lot of intricate detail, but it, it looks like the, the living room is all covered with plastic, um, which really freaks me out. I hate the sound of plastic on cushions, as you know. Is furnished still in here? Yes. There's a few. There's a rug made of bear, and uh, to the right here is another room 
and that leads into the it looks like the the TV room. It's got a bunch of old old sports memorabilia from the 30s. Is it a man cave, Detective Riley? Kind of like a man cave. You know how football players used to instead of helmets, they used to just strap on pieces of leather. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a couple of those framed uh, signs, presumably by old stars, football stars. Uh, then there's a wooden oar, two of them crisscrossing. Or what? Two pieces of oar crisscrossed. Oh, okay. Detective Riley, I, I know I do remember when football players used to wear leather helmets, but just to remind you, I'm not into sports, and I don't think you are either. No, I know. It's just there. It, there's a sign that says old football helmets, and so kind of clued me in. I wouldn't have figured out it on my own. Well, Detective Riley, I, I'm just saying this house seems like it's furnished because down here, there's a bunch of cast off crap. There's a box here that's full of old football trophies. There's a big sheet of plastic roll that looks like it could be used maybe to cover up furniture. There's an old furnace down here, Detective Riley. Well, of course, there's an old furnace down here, but it's like a really old timey furnace, Detective Riley. It's a fire burning fur- furnace, like a wood burning furnace. And, Detective Riley, you're never going to believe this. It's burning right now. There's wood. There's a stack of wood right next to it, next to this big act. Oh, uh, Detective Potter, what happened? Are you okay? Detective Pada is frozen, paralyzed in place by an unseen force. For the Bureau boys always seem to find an unseen force. Detective Potter gazes into the fire of the furnace for the reflection off of the axe next to the furnace revealed a figure standing directly behind him. Detective Riley. Detective Potter. Detective Riley, can you still hear me okay? For some reason, even though you're whispering, it's like you're speaking just as loudly. Well, I'm right by the furnace, so I'm right by the vent. Detective Riley. What's happening? I don't want to move. There's a... There's a figure right behind me. Detective Potter spins to confront the figure. When he does, he realizes it's just an old rusty bird cage. But there's a living parakeet inside. And this is no ordinary parakeet, for this parakeet has the gift of voice. Detective Riley, oh my god, I'm okay. It wasn't, thank you for asking. No, I'm fine, I promise. It wasn't anyone, it was a, it was a birdcage. Detective Riley, there's a, there's a parakeet in this birdcage. There's two parakeets in this birdcage. I didn't see the first one, Detective Riley. There's two parakeets in this birdcage. Unbeknownst to Detective Potter, the other parakeet was finishing humping the first one. So they looked like one parakeet, but now it is clear that there's two. Soon, there may be three parakeets. Detective Riley. They're, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, I'm here. You know, you. I feel like Detective Riley, you, you... Look, in my studies, I know very much so that parakeets are able to talk. Now, I, yes. if I remember from my studies again... That they're able yeah. to talk. It definitely wasn't a parrot. It was definitely a parakeet, I think, Detective Riley. You know what? I'm just going to ask them. Just ask, ask them the questions. Hello. <laughs> Get a load of this cracker. I know, right? <laughs> Where the hell did he come from? The sky? He looks whiter than my poo. What do you want? Uh, no offense. I mean... None taken. It's fine. Listen, what are you guys doing? To, you know what? Never mind that question. We're fucking, if that's what you want to know. And you walked in on a perfectly good fuck session. Rah! We do it by smashing our cloacas together. Rah! Ne- next to the fire. Indeed. Parakeets do fuck that way. <laughs> I'm so sorry to interrupt. Uh, listen, my partner and I are here to investigate... I don't know. I guess you could say it's a poisoning, a, a spell, a hex. Do you guys know anything about who lives in this house? Gloria Grandwich and the late 
John Greenwich. Ah, John Greenwich. Johnny wants a Greenwich. Johnny, go fast. Catch the ball, Greenwich. Ah, Johnny Greenwich, minor league baseball player. Are you saying that Gloria Gren? First of all, was it Gloria Greenwich married to Johnny Greenwich? Ah, absolutely. They were. Jack up. We couldn't get any fucking done until the Greenwiches left. So you're saying the Greenwiches left? Did we say that or didn't we say that? Oh no, this is a real Alice in Wonderland situation. Look, I just need to know, is there anyone else in this house with you guys? Yeah, your partner, you dipshit. Okay, thank you. First of all, watch your language. You want us to watch our language? Then why don't you stop watching us? Fuck you, freak! Listen, I'll take you two. I'll take both you two down into a into a coal mine if you don't watch what you say. That's what we're retired from being coal mine parakeets. Haven't you seen our favorite pieces of ore upstairs? Pieces of ore. Detective Riley, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. This is an enthralling conversation. Oh, that's right. You can hear everything. Good. I didn't want to have to repeat all this. Okay, Detective Riley, these parakeets are frankly super rude, but are you seeing any pieces of ore upstairs? Yes, I just said there's two pieces of ore, cross pieces of ore, next to the old football pieces of leather. Oh, I thought you meant ores like paddling ores. Oh, you idiots. Well, at first I thought you meant ore like, like the conjunction. Then I thought you explained it, and I thought there were paddling oars. How, Detective Riley, how do you crisscross two chunks of ore? Now, why don't you ask the keys? Okay, guys, you heard the question. Rock! Hey, guys, real quick, how come you start every single one of your sentences with that brocking sound? Can't you just start to... Rock! Nope! We have to get into our voices! I noticed that time you didn't do it. Well, sometimes we defy expectations. Sue us, lawyer man! Listen, I'm not a lawyer, I'm a detective. Okay, how do you have two crisscrossing pieces of ore? Well, of course, they're shaped like baseball bats, like Johnny used to play. And he wishes he could have played football. That's why he collects all that memorabilia. Yeah, I feel like catching is not as impressive of a thing to talk about for a baseball player, whereas for a football player, like a wide receiver, that would make a lot of sense. So I get it, I get it. Okay, so... Johnny wanted to be a football player, but instead, he was a minor league baseball player? Wait a minute. Detective Riley, I think I remember. Do you remember Johnny Greenwich? He played here in town. Yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he he really gave our town, he put us on the map. That's right. He never made it to the majors. Detective Riley, do you remember what happened to Johnny Greenwich? He was going to make the majors, and remember he got, before the big playoff, like the the minor league playoffs, he got a little bit sick. He was a little bit under the weather. And then do you remember he mysteriously broke both of his legs? Which, by the way, Detective Riley, I want to assure you again, my legs are not broken from that horrible fall that I took down into the basement. Great, moving on. Brock? Yeah, he broke both of his legs. He was trying to get something out of the medicine cabinet upstairs. <gasps> Detective Riley, that's exactly what we're here for. Uh, thank you, helpful parakeets. I'm gonna climb up these stairs. Detective Riley, there's stairs down here because it's a basement. That makes sense, right? I'm gonna climb up these stairs and I'm gonna meet you upstairs, okay? Yes, get up here quickly. Okay, thank you, parakeets. Get out of here. We're, uh, so the parakeets take out their dicks and begin fucking again as Detective Pata ascends the staircase. Eight, nine, ten, eleven... 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, yeah. Sorry, Detective Riley. I have that little bit of OCD that I have to count the stairs when I go up them. Yes. Here, uh, here. I'll flip the light switch on twice for you. Thank you. Thank you. But now I have to flip it on and off four times instead of the normal two. But thank you. Thank you for trying to think of me. Oh, Detective Riley, we got to go upstairs and we got to check out this medicine cabinet. We don't even know if the medicine cabinet is upstairs, but I think that's a good point. We should go upstairs and check that out. What have you been doing this entire time? Well, I was, I, I was admire, I was trying to learn a little bit more about football, and then you mentioned uh, baseball, and and actually over here there is a little uh, a little ball uh, in a glass case. Detective Riley, have you been watching game tape? Detective Pato sees Detective Riley in a lazy boy with the plastic removed, flipping through 
Hold videotapes. Detective Riley has a notepad on his lap with several X's and O's on it, sketching out different plays. I never knew football was so interesting. You know, if we, if, if man, if only, if Johnny could have worked on... Detective Potter slaps the notebook out of Detective Riley's lap. You had a notebook this whole time and you didn't tell me? I thought you left all your stuff in the car. I would have been taking notes on the parakeets conversation and also how they fuck. That's okay. I have an audio memory. I remember everything I hear. Oh, okay. Can you play back then about the last 10 minutes of my parakeet conversation? So Detective Riley plays back the last 10 minutes of the parakeet conversation. That was actually extraordinarily impressive, Detective Riley. I am... I'm blown away, frankly. But let's get upstairs, though. Rock. Oh, sorry. Yes, let's go. The Bureau Boys ascend the spooky stairs. It creaks and wanes and whines under the weight of Detective Potter. It barely makes a sound under the almost non-existent weight of Detective Riley. They reach the top. Looking through a narrow hallway. On the right is a spooky bathroom. The door is ajar with a flickering overhead light, the kind you would see in a dank office space. The light has been left on. The bureau boys approach the door. There is nobody inside. Of the bathroom. I just want to remind you, Detective Potter, that we are technically breaking and entering. Why did you tell me that? Now I'm going to have to be thinking about it. Detective Riley, can I ask you to do one thing for me? Uh, Anything for you. Okay, if we open this medicine cabinet, it has a mirror on it, okay, Detective Riley? I just don't want either to, like, look down into the sink and look back up into the mirror and have someone behind me or like have the cabinet door open and close it and there's someone behind me so can you not stand behind me if i'm ever looking into the medicine cabinet mirror okay i'll stand i'll stand right to your left okay that would also be bad though because this op- i also don't want to open the cabinet because there's a mirror on the inside too and have a figure in that part i've already had my jump scare downstairs detective riley with the birdcage Right, right, right. Not the birdcage, the movie, the birdcage that the two parakeets were in. Fucking. Right. Yes. The, yes, exactly. Uh, although, there are... Anyway, okay, very good. Were you going to say something about sex in the birdcage? I was going to say there are some similarities, yeah, <laughs> between the two. It doesn't matter. What matters is, I will... Okay, this is the best I can do. I can I can get real close. I can, I can hold you from behind, like if we were riding a motorcycle together. And so my head is directly behind your head. And so I'll just be, I'll be smelling the back of your neck. You'll, so it's as if we're one person. Kind of like when you saw those parakeets fucking downstairs, you didn't realize there were two of them because they were fucking. Yes. So I'll, I'll assume, I'll assume the fuck position behind you. Okay. You don't actually have to fuck if you don't want to. The, we, we, have, we're on the job, Detective Riley. Let's You're right. table that conversation for a different time. I appreciate you. Okay, Detective Riley, bear in mind, when we open this cabinet, if the legend holds true, we are going to see every single bad thing that we've ever done in our lives. And we're going to be afflicted with the worst possible thing we could be afflicted with. Which is which is what, Detective Riley? What could two de- brilliant detectives like us ever possibly be afflicted with that would affect our livelihood? It's too ghastly to even say out loud. Okay, I guess... We'll just have to see. Wait a minute, Detective Riley. Do you think if we wear sunglasses that it'll be okay? Or maybe if we just don't look directly. You know what? Let's do, Detective Riley. Let's just not look into the mirror or into the cabinet. Right. We should. We'll close our eyes. Yeah. We'll open the cabinet. Right. We'll feel around in the cabinet. Okay. Okay. I'm on board. Okay. We'll take everything that we think we need in the cabinet out of the cabinet. Uh Right, right, right. Okay, and then we'll close the cabinet. And and then we'll get out of the bathroom, close the bathroom door, and examine what we take. Exactly right, Detective Riley. We're really becoming one on this, like two birds. At the very moment Detective Potter uttered these words, Detective Riley grasps him from behind as they prepare to enter the spooky bathroom. Okay. Okay, Detective Riley. All right. 
I'm feeling my way around. I think we should have our eyes shut starting now. Eyes. Just in eyes case. Eyes closed now. Okay, eyes closed now. I'm feeling around. Okay, I feel the sink. Detective Potter accidentally turns on the sink. Okay, I'm feeling the shower. Detective Potter accidentally flushes the toilet. And now I think I'm feeling some soap. Detective Potter grabs Detective Riley's nose. Okay, alright. Oh, here it is. Here's the medicine cabinet, Detective Riley. Detective Potter swings open the medicine cabinet door and a gust of wind rushes out across their faces. Detective Potter feels into the medicine cabinet. He grabs various toiletries and stows them into his pockets. He cleans out the medicine cabinet, closes the door. The bureau boys back out of the bathroom and close the door behind themselves. Okay, Detective Riley, I think it's okay to open your eyes now. Okay. Detective Riley opens his eyes and Detective Potter holds his face right in front of Detective Riley to startle him. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Why? I thought it would be funny. Sorry. It's because you didn't ask if my legs were broken, and they're not. Detective Potter, you know I care about you. Yeah, it's just, there's more important things to care about. Like, what's, what's in, in that mess in again? Okay, okay. Detective Potter reaches into his pockets and starts removing items one by one. Okay, Detective Riley, we've got some uh, hair regrowth cream. We've got some moisturizer, some dental floss. It's pretty, pretty normal medicine cabinet stuff so far, Detective Riley. A couple of those, uh, those things you use to clean out your ears. Q-tips, uh, Detective Riley. I kn- yeah, I sure. I know you're unfamiliar, but Q-tips. You're not supposed to use them to clean it. You know what, Detective Riley? We don't have time to get into it. Uh, there's some some hair gel, some mouthwash, tube of toothpaste. Yeah, wait, this tube of toothpaste. I've never heard of this brand before. Sinner's mouth. That seems like the opposite of a cleaning toothpaste. That, and that seems like a terrible. That's terrible branding. You would think, right? Sinner's mouth. Who would want to? It says it tastes like blood. <laughs> After closely examining the toothpaste, the Buro boys realized that. This was not packaged in a properly inspected facility. It seems that the toothpaste was homemade. It appears that only one out of five dentists recommends it. Detective Riley, this is... It's almost used up. It looks like it's homemade toothpaste, so I guess we know where it's made, but I thought it would give us a clue somewhere that we'd go to, but if it's homemade... We... It's homemade, but it's not made in this home, Detective Riley. No, it certainly isn't, because the address is on Maple Street, not on Elm Street. Uh, Detective Riley, this is the address of the apothecary that Gloria... Greenwich. Thank you. Detective Riley, thank you for always being Johnny on the spot with Gloria's last name, because... Call me Johnny Rotten. You would think I'd be able to remember it, Detective Riley, since it's Greenwich, and she seems like this evil, haggy character. Not that she's a character, she's a real person. We're still in this house and we don't know if she's here or not. My god, we haven't even inspected all the rooms. I asked the parakeets. Oh, right. Yeah, they're trustworthy. They kind of didn't answer, though, either. Mm -hmm. Did they? No, they said they they can have sex now that Gloria Greenwich and Johnny Greenwich are gone. Detective Riley, do you want to inspect all the rooms, or do you want to just follow this next clue to the next place? I feel like we should get out of here because we've already, we've overstayed our welcome, and we don't have a proper warrant, although there's no authority that's even going to give us a warrant, so what am I caring about it? Anyway, let's chase down this clue. Agreed. So, the Bureau Boys, armed with no equipment and one tube of toothpaste, left the spooky house. Will the Bureau Boys find the origins of the homemade Sinner's Mouth toothpaste? Do parakeets 
actually have sex with penises? What happened to Gloria and Johnny Grandwich? Where are they? Are they still alive? Were they in that house somewhere? Did the Bureau boys closing their eyes prevent them from being infected by the mysterious cabinet? Tune in next time on the case of the tasteful cabinet. Ooh. Ooh.